Hello everybody and welcome back or welcome to Elderflower Stitches. Everybody and welcome back or welcome to Elderflower Stitches. My name is Susie and this is my YouTube channel all about knitting and sewing and all of my other crafty hobbies. Today's video is a podcast and I have some finished objects, some works in progress and some just started projects to show you including some knitting and also a little bit of pottery so very varied podcast today. A little bit about me in case this is the first time that you're meeting me. As I said, my name is Susie. Um, I live with my husband Joe and our little boy Gus, who is two years old. We live in the southeast of England, just along the south coast. And um, we have a cat called Beatrice. She is super fluffy. She's um, eight years old now and she's a ragdoll cross Persian, but she has definitely inherited a lot more Persian characteristics than ragdoll because she is definitely not a kind of well-behaved cuddly cat <laughs> she's more scottish wild cat to be honest um but yeah so that's us that's our little family um i work part-time as a primary school teacher and when i'm not doing that or busy being a mum i like making things for my etsy shop i dye yarn and make project bags and progress keepers and stitch markers and goodies like that um, which I'm sure you'll see lots of throughout this video. I will put a link in the description box below which will have um, all of my podcast show notes. So it will tell you all of the patterns that I've used, the yarn that I've used, if they're available I'll link it unless it's you know something that's not available to buy. Um, yeah I think that's just about everything for my introduction. So I want to start this video with a huge thank you to everyone who watched especially my last video. I put up a podcast a few weeks back and it had way more views than any of my podcasts have for a long time. Um, so I don't know whether the algorithm just didn't like me and then I did something <laughs> um, different but I had loads of videos on that last, um, I had loads of views on that last video and it gave me such a confidence boost. And it's really helped me get back into my knitting and enjoy crafting again because I felt so excited to share more with you. So thank you so much for watching that last one. And I also picked up lots of new subscribers and have now reached over 4,000 subscribers, which is amazing. So I am going to be doing a giveaway with some lovely little yarn and goodies, which you can see there. And I will explain all of that a little bit later on in this video. But I just wanted to start off by saying thank you so much because I really appreciate it and yeah it's given me such a good boost to keep knitting and making lovely things. So let's talk finished objects. The first one that I'm showing you has been on my needles for a long time and if you have watched any of my podcasts from a few months or maybe even a year back you probably will have seen this project before but it's finally finished and off my needles for now. <laughs> I will explain. So this is the beautiful Mariek Little Jumper, which is a pattern by Along Avicanna, um, Anna Devo. And it's this gorgeous colorwork yoke sweater with a round neck. Um, and it does have a little colorwork pattern to put on the cuffs, but I didn't do that, I just did them plain. And here it is. So my door keeps like banging in the door frame. Hang on a minute. So I knit this for my son who I mentioned earlier um, and he's two and I knit, I started knitting this a year ago when he was one <laughs> and I knit the size age two um, and it took me a very long time to finish so it kind of fits however when I tried it on the sleeves are a little bit too fitted and slightly short so they come to about here on him um, which is a sleeve length that I really like but for him I want it to be longer um I think it's always better to go longer than shorter on children's jumpers and you can always roll up the sleeves the body is fine the length of the body is fine so I need to go back and pick up probably going to pick up about halfway down the sleeve and then stop decreasing um so 
not do these last two decreases here and then knit it probably another inch or two longer and then add the cuff. So it's finished, it's washed, it's blocked, the ends are woven in and then I'm just not quite happy with the size of it so I need to do it again. So yeah, it's washed, it's blocked, it's technically finished but I think in order for it to be a wearable garment for my son um, I need to just have another little redo of the end of the sleeves and then it will be um, something that fits him and he can wear over autumn and winter and then it's not a waste of all my hard work knitting. <laughs> so this is um, some yarn that I dyed up. I often dress him in like navy and blues and um, he has little brown shoes so I thought um, that these colours would go really nicely with clothes that he wears all the time. So I dyed this up and then the um, white fab, the white yarn is just undyed yarn. I'm pretty pleased with this because it's actually my first attempt at a colour work sweater and it's my, and it's my second attempt at colour work ever. So the first attempt at colour work was probably six years ago I think and I made some colour work mittens and the floats were way too tight and I couldn't even get them on so that was disastrous and I think put me off for a long time and then I just saw this jumper and was like just totally in love with the colour work and I thought I'm just going to give it a go because I've learnt a lot as a knitter since then um, and I'm really pleased that I did it again because it looks lovely it's really cute and um, I think it will keep him nice and cosy. It's knit in DK yarn. Uh, it's my super DK base, which is 25, um, 75% super wok, super wok, 75% super wash merino and 20% nylon. So it's quite a nice, um, easy care yarn. I think that's everything I need to say about it. Um, another finished object now is my Sophie scarf. Now we had lots of chat on my last podcast about what to do with this because I just picked up some yarn and some needles and started making the Sophie scarf. I just wanted a really easy project that I could just get on with. And then I got over halfway and realized I did not have enough yarn. Um, so I had two options and I asked you to give me your opinion on what you would do. And it was a pretty unanimous decision. So my two options were that I dye up some more yarn to match what I had already started with. And the second option was to use a variegated yarn which had the same colour in it. And here's what I went for. So this is the start. This is what I showed you <clears throat> last time. It's this gorgeous colour which is, I don't know, I think it's probably going to going to blow out quite a lot but it's called vintage silk and it's like a really um subtle blush pink color well not even pink it's more like it's like between peach and pink but the colorway ran out <laughs> and I went with the pretty unanimous decision that I should carry on in the variegated yarn lots of you said that I should um <coughs> Lots of you said that I should go back to the centre point where you start decreasing and then use the variegated yarn from there. But I actually just decided to add it on and just carry on to the end. I love it here and then I'm not so keen here. I should have thought this through and as a yarn dyer I should have known better. <laughs> um, because of the way this colourway is dyed up. I knew that it would create a kind of stripey effect and that when the project got narrower those stri stri stripes would get wider. Don't know why I didn't think that through and this feels a little bit Dr. Zeusy for me. I don't know if that makes any sense for you but I'm not a lover of wide stripes. I like skinny stripes but not wide ones. So it's finished, it's woven in, the ends are woven in, it's been washed, it's been blocked. It's wearable, I just don't love the end of it and I feel like it probably will put me off from wearing it. In reality, I do love semi-solids and I think probably 
um, I would make it again just in semi-solid. However, when I then went to put it on, I just don't really like how it looks on me. Um, I made the larger size, and to be honest, when I wear it, it just kind of looks, I don't, don't know whether maybe it's because of the colour is like so pale, or I don't know, it kind of looks a bit like a neck brace slash uh, like an old man's grubby neckerchief. <laughs> I'm going to try it on for you now and you can see what you think because I don't love it. But maybe you, you have other ideas. So here it is just, you know, wrapped around as a scarf. Do you see what I mean? I just don't love how this has turned out here. Um, so I'm kind of okay with it like that, but you're meant to tie it. I just don't know. I, I don't know. Do, what do you think? Is it, it doesn't look on me like it does on the designer. It doesn't look on me like it does on everyone else who's made them. It kind of, I don't know how I'm meant to wear it. I don't want it to be too tight around my neck. But then if I tie it, it becomes a bit ruffly, so I don't love it. Don't love it. Um, so I might I might gift it. Somebody might get it for Christmas. Um, but yeah, it's finished and I got the nice buzz of ends woven in, washed, blocked, finished off, proud of myself that I completed a project. But I'm a bit disappointed that this and the jumper are finished but I'm not happy with them so I, I need to go back and change things with the jumper. There's not really anything I can change with this. I'm not going to go to the effort of unpicking it to like add the semi-solid because I'd have to dye it up so in which case I might as well remake the whole thing. But I don't want to remake the whole thing because I don't like how it looks on me. So I feel like that's just one of those projects that you're like, oh well it's done. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll keep it in the house so if we have friends around for a walk and they've forgotten a scarf they can wear it um do you have any projects like that that you just like it's finished but you don't love it what would you do would you would you just keep it would you gift it do I unpick it and use the yarn for something else I don't know it's quite a small amount of yarn so what else could I make with it it wouldn't be enough to make a hat I don't know, I don't know. I think I'm just going to leave it and gift it maybe. <clears throat> now onto something I finished and I love, although I haven't woven in the ends yet and it's not washed and blocked, but I love it. So we're happy and it's a finished object. I knit myself a pair of wrist ticklers, which is a free pattern by the lovely Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. And um, it is knit with sock weight yarn and sock needles. So it's knit almost as if it were a pair of socks, but you just make a little tube and they are wrist warmers. So there's no thumb, there's no thumb gusset, there's no thumb hole or anything like that. It's just a tube of knitting. And I knit them in this gorgeous yarn, which is one of my luxury bases, uh, which is alpaca, silk and cashmere. So you can see there's a little bit of a halo to it. That's the alpaca. And then the slight sheen is from the uh, silk and then just absolutely gorgeous squishiness is from uh, the alpaca and the cashmere. So this is a gorgeous luxury base, um, which I would like to knit a onesie in and just roll around in. It's so soft and lovely. And I thought it would be perfect to have on my hands as a little cuff. So I'll show you how, I, how I'm planning to wear them. And they go especially nicely with this um, top because the sleeves are slightly short on it. So it works out really nicely. Also the sleeve is gathered so it fits in neatly. So this is how I would wear them. Basically to extend the sleeve of whatever I'm wearing and then cover up my hand a little bit. And I purposely made it so that this cuff 
is shorter and therefore would have a bit more kind of give to it than the top cuff. So this is um, where I cast on and I did a stretchy Italian cast on. Did I, no, I did a German twisted cast on and then one by one ribbing and then knit straight through the whole thing. And then I did um, one by one twisted ribbing here, but I did 16 rows, whereas this was 12 rows. So I wanted this to be a bit more fitted and not fall down. And then I didn't do a stretchy cast off. I just did a regular bind off there. And then I did the same for the other one. So now I have two. I have a pair of wrist warmers. They are actually really warm. And I think that comes from the alpaca and the cashmere. They are like quite lofty and snuggly. So gorgeous, gorgeous little project. I'm really happy with those. I just need to weave in the ends, give them a little wash and a block and they're ready to wear just in time for autumn and winter. And this colorway is called Point Shoes, by the way, which is um, one of, one of my two original colourways, point shoes and pirouettes, which were the colourways that I very first started my shop with. Um, yeah, and it's just like a really gorgeous peachy blush. Lots of peaches and pinks and blushes. If you haven't met me before, you'll see lots of those colours. And uh, on the same vein, we have a, a half finished pair of socks, but also with a little bit of work to do. Um, <clears throat> so I started a pair of lacy socks. These are the wildflower and honey socks. And how cute is this little progress keeper? <laughs> um, so these are the wildflower and honey socks and they are a gorgeous, simple lacy sock pattern. I love a lacy sock, but I also want a lace pattern that I can remember and don't have to keep referring back to. If you like patterns like that, this is a great one. So if you liked the Mercury sock, then the Wildflower and Honey sock is a good, a good option for you as well. But I knit them toe up because I don't like doing cuff down, basically. So I started down here and I did a whirlwind toe and then knit the lace work. And I'm going to do a an afterthought heel um, because I prefer how it fits. I had a go at doing an afterthought heel last summer and really fell in love with the structure of it. So I'll be doing another afterthought heel in there. And I've made them shorty socks. So the heel will be here. And then I, there's just one lace repeat. And for the cuff, I've decided to do a pico cuff, which is half a finished. So a pico cuff is actually really easy to add to your socks. Once you've finished your lace, you just need to knit some rows plain and then knit a round of knit two, yarn over, knit two together, yarn over all the way round and then knit a few more rows plain. And then when you cast off, you can turn it under and you stitch this back down to the rest of the sock and you end up with this gorgeous little pico cuff and you end up with quite a nice effect where you stitch the um, two layers together it almost makes the cuff stand out a little bit more so I decided that that would look really lovely with the lace so we're nearly finished I need to add the afterthought heel I need to finish the cuff um, but another issue I just keep having issues at the moment with my knitting I think my brain's not with it at the moment I looked up a stretchy bind off that wouldn't cause too much flare because I need to tuck it back in and sew it. I didn't want it to have loads of flare. And I used this bind off and I mean, there's absolutely no stretch to it at all. So I can't get that on my foot, <laughs> I'm very annoyed. I need to unpick all of that um, and then redo the cast off, which is going to use more yarn than I've got there. So I'm going to need to join a bit more yarn and deal with that. My knitting's just not going very well at the moment, but at least I am knitting, that's all I can say, because I definitely went through a phase where I was not even knitting, so it's not so bad. Um, yeah, I just need to do the heel and sort the cuff out and then stitch the cuff down. So, not a finished object, but one 
partially finished sock. <laughs> um, yeah, let's talk whips, uh, proper whips. So I have a pair of socks, which I'm kind of, kind of doing for the Strictly Sock Along. And I know, you, I know you're allowed to cheat, but I feel like I'm really cheating because I've barely watched Strictly yet, but these are technically my Strictly Sock Along socks. Um, so these are, I've got them in my little sock bag, by the way, which I have a pattern for this. If you want to have a go at knitting your own sock bag, I don't often have the sock bags in the shop, I don't often sell them, but you can always get the pattern. And it is just the right size for one cake of yarn and your little sock project. Uh, so here they are, they're very cute. Here is my little pair of Strictly socks. I decided to go with a um, sort of self-striping effect yarn. So this is dyed up in the same way as the yarn that I used to finish off my Sophie scarf. And it sort of reminded me that the ombre style yarn that I've dyed up in the past gives this kind of stripey effect. And I remember somebody, and I'm really sorry, I can't remember who, knit a pair of wrist warmers or socks in my buttercup ombre colorway. And it looked like this, but it was like little yellow stripes and it was so pretty. And I thought, oh, I would love to have a go at knitting some socks and see how the striping turns out. And I'm loving it so much that I have decided next year I'm going to run a club, a yarn club, which will be, I don't know whether to call it the self-striping sock club or whether that's a bit misleading because it's not a proper self-striping yarn. It will only create these little stripes if you're knitting something small like socks or wrist warmers but just love the effect. So I think I might call it something like the Skinny Stripe Sock Club or something like that. But it will be a 100 gram skein of yarn that's dyed in a way that creates these cute little skinny stripes and then a matching mini. Because of the way the 100 gram skein is dyed up, you would get a really funny looking pattern, a bit like the end of my the end of my Sophie scarf um, on the toe if you were to do that in the same yarn so I've made a little mini to go with it so this is how it's looking I did a kind of wedge toe I guess I sort of made it up as I went along really and then increased up to 64 stitches and knit just plain vanilla so that you can see the colorway nicely um, and this colourway will probably be one of the colourways for one of the months. It's called Berry Stains and it's just a lovely cool pink. Um, but yeah, I need to have a little think because I would like to do a monthly yarn club again next year. Which means I need to be organised with um, listings and getting it, yeah, getting it sorted. Because what I would like to do is offer it. So you can purchase three months at a time and three months will be shipped in one go together. So for those of you who are international, it really reduces the amount that you're paying for shipping. Um, so I need to get my act together and get sorted. Um, there might even be a link below by the time I put this video together. But yes, the skinny stripy sock club um, in that colorway. There you go. So my next whip is a garment, which I haven't knit one of for ages, um, but the lovely Rika of Refined Knitwear had a sale on for her birthday and it was 30% off all of her patterns and so I treated myself to a few patterns. I bought two jumper patterns and two cardigan patterns and um, they're both so there's a cardigan and a jumper in one style and a cardigan and a jumper in the other style. And what I love about her patterns is that rather than having a round neck, which a lot of jumper patterns have, it's actually a boat neck and that's a lot more flattering on me. I find a round neck actually makes my shoulders look quite big um, and it just makes me look really broad across my shoulders and my chest. And so I much prefer a boat neck style. And this is 
the one that I've gone for. So you can see it just sits a bit wider across her shoulders. It's called the Nigram or Negram sweater. And it's a really lovely simple jumper pattern. And then it's got this cute bishop sleeve, which I love a kind of um, a gathered sleeve with a little cuff. So love all of those styles. Really delicate feminine styles are just totally up my street. Let me show you the colorway that I have decided to go with. And it has just taken me about five minutes to untangle myself because it was all in such, such a muddle. I don't know how that had happened. Um, I had kept it in a basket rather than a project bag. And I wonder if it just had too much room in there <laughs> and it got itself into a little bit of a muddle. I'll show you the colorway and then I'll show you how much I've done because it's not a lot. <laughs> so this is a colorway I am knitting in. It looks almost white on camera, but it is like the palest creamy beige and it's called Kiln Dried Firewood. So it's like this really pale honey brown and um, matching Surrey silk, um, which the two together just look so gorgeous. Um, and here is what I have done so far. So I have just started, I've just started the neckline basically. And it's really simple, one by one ribbing. And it will, because it's a boat neck rather than a round neck, it will sit across more like this than like this. And, oh sorry, I should have my phone on silent. And it is just so much more flattering on me than a round neck, so. It's really simple construction. Um, raglan style sleeve and on silent raglan style sleeve and everything so yeah very simple but uh, it'll give me a chance to really practice working on like fitting and nice simple one just to be knitting on in the evenings or in the car and yeah i had to go up a whole needle size to get gauge so i don't know whether the designer has small gauge or um I have big gauge, no, other way around. Um, but yeah, I had to go up a whole needle size for gauge. So I'm knitting on nice big needles, which hopefully will make it go quite quickly. Um, <clears throat> right, so that is everything for, oh, the lighting keeps going really funny when I turn around. That's everything for finished objects and knitting and things in terms of knitting finished objects and whips in terms of knitting and I just had two little finished objects to show you from when I went to a little hen do and it was a pottery hen do so first of all I decorated um, this cute little pot so we did some pottery painting and I made it for school um, <laughs> the handwriting is not good but look at the bee <laughs> I'm really happy with how the bee turned out and then I added like lavender around the bottom. So it's just a really simple pot. It's not a mug. It hasn't got a handle, but um, love that. That was really good fun. I've done pottery painting before because my mum's friend, Gillian, owns a little pottery painting place um, very near to us. So I have been before, but brand new skill to me was a little bit of throwing. So we actually had a go on the wheel and made our own pots. And this is my one, it's a little bit wonky, but I'm in love with it, it's so cute. Um, yeah, I absolutely loved doing this, and I definitely want to have a go, so I need to find somewhere local that I can do a bit of pottery throwing and have a go, because it was so fun, and actually a lot simpler than I thought it would be. Okay, it's not symmetrical, but it's a pot and it works and it's not like flopped over and gone really rubbish and I didn't get clay everywhere. It was um, easier than I thought it would be. Sorry, I think there's a toddler causing mischief downstairs. Um, so yeah, that was, that was what I made. We didn't get to paint those because we just um, made them and then they kiln, they, what did they, do? they fired them in the kiln. I'm going to really quickly show you what's available for my giveaway and then I think I need to go and take over toddling, toddling, parenting the toddler because my husband's got to go to rugby. I thought as we're coming into winter it would be nice to have some really 
gorgeous chunky yarns for knitting some hats so i've got three um skeins to give away and matching progress keepers to go with each and this is my snuggle base which is 100 percent baby alpaca and it's a chunky weight yarn it's so gorgeous so this is 100 meters per 100 grams and this is a 100 gram skein this colorway is called candy roaster which is a lovely warm cherry pink and this one is called golden hour which is a really gorgeous yellow and then this one is called last leaves and it's this beautiful almost like tiffany blue green which i love it's just not wanting to focus i'm really sorry about that what if i hold all three together there we go come on so those are the three colorways and then i have a coordinating progress keeper and stitch marker set for each of those um and i've dropped one on the floor <clears throat> so here is the one to go with the pink and these are um made from little glass beads which i've hand mounted onto little rose gold head pins and then you get little stitch markers to go with it this is the yellow one and the green so one to go with each of the colorways right i'm going to end this quite abruptly i'm afraid because it sounds like it's my turn to go down and look after the toddler so that my husband can go off to his rugby game he's got an away game today so he's got to go and get on the coach and get all the way up to teddington i think uh, somewhere in surrey so i better go but it's been lovely chatting with you and as you have made it to the end i will give you some information for the secret giveaway so my secret giveaway is for those of you who watch all the way to the end of my video and last time i just said let me know that you've made it to the end but this time i thought it would make it a little bit fun and try including like a secret code word so i'm going to give you the code word now you need to somehow incorporate it into your comment um, but don't make it too obvious because we don't want to give it away the secret giveaway is just for those of you who watch the whole of the video so my secret code word for this well a secret phrase i guess for this podcast is stitch definition so just try and get that phrase into your comments and i will know that you have watched all the way to the end um i think it'd be a really fun little game for us to play and next podcast i'll have another secret word which i will use and um yeah i think it would be really good fun and i will announce the winner for last um last podcast secret giveaway by putting it on the screen here so i'm going to go and do like a random comment generator and pick somebody who mentioned that they'd watched all the way to the end of last podcast and they will win some lovely yarn i'll basically just let you choose a skein of yarn from my etsy shop because that's all on my shelves here and ready to ship so I will pop your name here if you won. Go and have a little browse in my Etsy shop and then pop me a message on there to say, I won the giveaway and I would like this yarn, please. Um, and that's all you have to do. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again very soon. Bye.